Hey folks, just another uh, New Hampshire update. Uh, <laughs> first one comes from the union leader. Senate, Senator Ayotte visits New Hampshire medical facilities. It all has to do with the Obamacare and, well, we already know, well, knew before she went to become a senator, how she followed the Constitution. I mean, she told Lynch that it was okay to go after the JUA funds, which is totally unconstitutional. The state has nothing to do with that. They oversee it. That's it. It's not their money. A revolutionary synthetic oil that takes clean. But you know where she's going with this. She'll oh Obamacare's gonna be the greatest thing. You voted her in, not me. Concord monitor. <laughs> Union buck sting excites ire. Well, like I said, it's a huge shit pie. And we all got to take a bite of it. Reps cut uh, $519 million deeper. In all spending set at $742 million less. The House Financial Committee yesterday approved a $10.1 billion uh, state budget for 2012 through 13. The budget spends $742 million less than the state is spending on the current budget and $519 million less than Democratic jo Governor John Lynch proposed. The budget includes no new taxes and returns money to cities and towns, which Lynch proposed cutting. At the same time, it makes major cuts to almost all state services, from social services to education to public safety. Two bills that make up the state budget passed 187 along party lines with Republican uh, Lee Quandit of Exeter joining Democrats and opposing them. Let me tell you what it is. I'm not going to read this whole story. It take me half an hour. But anywho, the House budget proposal, the House Finance Committee yesterday approved a $10.1 billion state budget, which recommends spending $519 million less than Governor John Lynch had recommended. The budget goes to the full House next week. Among the proposals, the committee would cut an additional $207 million from the Department of Health and Human Services beyond the governor's recommendations. Um, okay. Hospitals would lose $115 million in uncompensated care payments, but the committee would not impose a moratorium on new hospital building projects, as Lynch proposed. Funding would be eliminated or reduced for child care subsidiaries, adoption subsidiaries, domestic violence programs, uh, service link, link uh, assistant for, assistance for unemployed parents, people with development disabilities, and others. The committee would reinstate about $150 million in local aid, which Lynch proposed cutting. It would fully fund school building aid and catastrophic aid and would restore money for county nursing homes. It would require public employees to pay approximately 2% more towards their pensions. The committee would cut personal costs at the Department of Corrections by $4.4 million. And uh, let's see. The committee would establish a commission to study outsourcing at the Department of Transportation, which is expected to save $5 million in uh, 2013. The committee would abolish a recent $30 fee increase for vehicle registrations. It wasn't a tax. It was just a fee. Therefore, Lynch didn't break his promise of no new taxes. family of birds gave up flight and returned to the ground. Uh, let's see, where was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, as a result, the Department of Transportation would face cuts in local 
road projects, uh, road maintenance, and slowdown of Interstate 93 widening, yada, yada, yada. I still say it all should be privatized. Plain and simple. The committee would cut Department of Justice budget by about $3 million. A move uh, Attorney General Michael Delaney said means closing the Consumer Protection Bureau. Well, how about... Uh, we won't go into that one. I, I, we'll go into that one at some other time. Uh, let's see. The committee would add $3 million to the court system's budget to be used for innovations such as video arrangements that would make the courts more efficient. The committee recommended the an amendment that would make public employees at-will employees when their contracts expire, wages, health benefits, and uh, pension benefits would be up to the employers. The committee recommended eliminating the State Arts Council. Like I said, you sit shit sandwich. We are going to have to take bites. The best article I will have had to have seen today was an editorial from the Union Misleader. And uh, it's titled, uh, Not Necessary, The Line Item Veto. After reading this, it really confirmed. I pretty much thought this beforehand. I've always thought before that a line item veto, line item veto for the president would be great. But seeing it in this state, no, no, we don't need this. No. Anywho, a lot of Republicans seem convinced that if only the governor of New Hampshire had the power to veto individual state budget items, then the government would spend less money. Interestingly, it is the legislators who actually write and pass budgets who think this. This week, the state Senate passed a bill to give the governor what people are calling line item veto power. Actually, the constitutional amendment passed by the Senate would let governors reduce individual appropriations. That sounds great. In practice, though, it wouldn't be the remedy many think it is. Almost all governors, 44, have light item veto power, and yet New Hampshire, with its weak governor, consistently budgets better than most other states. How can that be? It's because we have a tax structure designed to keep revenue down, and a legislature designed to be very close to the people. Think a light item veto will help? Think again. A 2009 Richmond Federal Reserve Review of the Use of the Gubernatorial Line Item Veto summarized a study by economist Doug, Douglas Holes Aiken this way. Holes Aiken concludes that the line item veto may influence the spreading level only over the short run, particularly in regard to reducing a current budget deficit. In cases where a governor's policy party does not hold a majority in the legislature, over time, however, there is no significant, there is no statistical, statistically significant effect on the size of the budget in the long run. Instead, it seems that the line, line item veto simply alters the composition of spending. Do Republicans really want to give the governor the power to alter the compensation of state spending contrary to the intentions of the legislature? No. To keep state spending under control, New Hampshire doesn't need to give its governor the power to veto individual budget items. It needs to do what it did last year and what it has historically done, elect frugal legislators. We're going to call it quits on that one. This is quite long enough. Uh, I'm going to let you know on an update on just a little dirt. I'll attach it to this video. Uh, other than that, hey, peace.